Today, I'll be talking about the use of artificial blood and whether or not should their use be encouraged. First and foremost, many of you would question, what is artificial blood? Well, they are basically synthetic cells that are made to fulfill some functions of blood. In most cases, the main function of artificial blood is to help with the transport of oxygen in the body. But why should we use artificial blood? Isn't there an option of blood donation? Yes, there is. However, the supply from blood donations is insufficient to meet with the increasing demand for blood. With an increasing population and increasing life expectancy, there is a problem of an aging population which will subsequently lead to age-related chronic diseases and all this points towards an increase in the demand for blood. Furthermore, there is also a shortage of supply or there is a general lack of blood donors coming forth to donate blood. In fact, past statistics have shown that only about 40,000 of the entire Singapore population are blood donors. This represents only around 1% of our total population when in actual fact, some 65% of the population is eligible to donate blood. However, even with an increase in blood donations, blood transfusion using donated blood still has its limitations. Let us compare the use of donated blood and artificial blood. Firstly, donated blood has a short shelf life of 42 days, whereas artificial blood has a shelf life of up to 3 years. The longer shelf life would help boost the supply of blood, which could help ease the demand. Secondly, there is a risk of transmitting diseases through donated blood transfusions such as HIV, Hepatitis B and C. This is especially so in developing countries where there are lack of infrastructure to screen the blood. With artificial blood, there is no risk of transmitting of such diseases. Thirdly, the use of donated blood requires the cross-matching of blood types before the blood could be administered to the patient due to the antigens that is present on the red blood cells. In severe cases, it could even result in death if incompatible blood cells are used. However, artificial blood is universally compatible, which simply means that it is suitable for anyone to use it without having the need for cross-matching. Hence, the limitations of donated blood could be resolved with the use of artificial blood. Usefulness of artificial blood is particularly so in places where it is hard to get the regular blood supply. Places such as war zones and disaster areas often require blood but is unable to store blood due to logistical constraints. In developing countries, there is a high risk of transmitting infectious diseases to blood transfusions as not all blood donations could be screened. In 2011, there are still 39 countries that were unable to routinely screen all blood donations for at least one of the transmissible infections. Even with the benefits of artificial blood, the use of artificial blood is still limited as it is only approved for use in three countries, namely South Africa, Russia and Mexico. Case studies from South Africa have proven that the use of artificial blood is safe. However, other researchers question about the safety of using artificial blood. The overall mortality rate of five different artificial blood products from 16 clinical trials were studied. The results showed that there was a 30% increased risk of mortality and a 2.7-fold increase for myocardial infarction for patients who used artificial blood when compared to using normal blood transfusion. However, the study was not entirely accurate as the researchers grouped all the artificial blood products under one group which could be unfair to beneficial products. Besides, there are also statistical issues that were problematic in the report. Hence, I would like to conclude that the use of artificial blood should be greatly encouraged for the benefits that it could bring.